Hello everybody, this is Dr. Ali Mugabel and today we cover in this video current wireless systems. This is part of the wireless communications course and uh, again I'd like to thanks, uh, give some credit to Dr. Professor Andre Goldsmith and Professor Hank as some of the material might come from their resources. Uh, we're going to have basically two videos. The first one is about current systems, basically the classical systems, and there we'll talk about cellular systems. And remember that this is just an introduction. Those two will be covered later on in details, but we'll just get like one slide per topic. So we'll talk about cellular systems, whether 4G or 5G, if you want to call 5G a current system. Then we'll talk about Wi-Fi uh, wireless LANs, and it's also referred to as 6G, the 802.11ax. One slide about satellite systems, since it's also wireless communication. Then we have Bluetooth, Zigbee, and the trending names of uh, the trending technology of Internet of Things. In a coming video, hopefully, we'll touch on some of the topics that might be good for your research, including green communication, software defined radio, cognitive uh, radio, millimeter wave, massive MIMO, millimeter wave, and massive MIMO, wireless sensor networks, whether ad hoc, self organizing, or used for distributed control. Um, Li-Fi and some applications in health and biomedicine and, and neuroscience. Energy harvesting for wireless systems is a topic and then YGIG. I leave it for you. I will not cover all of them, but um, I leave it for you to find out what YGIG is, for example, and there is much more room for, for innovation. This is a timely topic and maybe if you watch the video after some time, uh, these topics will be shifted to current rather than being emerging. So watch for that. Now, if, to start with cellular systems, uh, the basic principle we'd like to know is that uh, the spectrum is a scarce uh, resource and we need to reuse the spectrum. So we introduce the spectrum reuse where the geographical area is going to be divided into cells and hence the name cellular system. Uh, we're going to use a frequencies, set of frequencies here, here, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Th those are going to use different set of frequencies usually and then we can reuse the frequency again in this uh, cell which has the same letter uh, the reason is that uh, we have limited number of frequencies that we can control so what we do is we limit the power so the coverage will be limited to the cell maybe there is some interference with the adjacent so we are not going to use the same frequency and this is going to be used later on here the principle of reuse, frequency reuse, introduces uh, interference, and it has to be done. We have to divide the geographic region into into cells, whether in terms of frequency, time slot, uh, code, space. They have to be different. We have to divide them either in time, frequency, code, and those inshallah will touch on them later on. Uh, since there is interference between the cells, we have to think about interference mitigation techniques, and of course whether uh, Another thing that comes with the, with the cellular system is the principle of handoff, which means if you use for, if you move from one cell to another, uh, you'll be served by one base station and then you'll be handed off to the next base station. All of these topics are going to be covered in details. Uh, if we make these cell size smaller so that we can reuse the frequency more, that's also one possibility, one trend where we have fem to cells and small cells. Of course, the complexity and the handoff would increase. So keep you in your mind that the word cellular is different than the word wireless. Wireless, we have wireless, cord, cordless, and then cellular. Not all wireless systems are cellular, but we'll, dis, we'll, we'll study the design of cellular systems. So this, these colors called also show one possible pattern for frequency reuse. Here we have, we're repeating every seven cells, and here we can see we have three different colors. For the 5G cellular networks, uh, this, the 5G cellular network is characterized by the following, or are characterized by the following, massive number of devices or things, wide spatial existence, it, the coverage is wide, heterogeneous types of devices, we have all type devices and network elements, high dynamic range of traffic, and high dynamic topology, and highly changing topology. The topology refers to the, how things are being connected together. Now, uh, if you look at this um, octagon or octagonal shape, you'll find that we have 
the features that you look at uh, extreme mobility low latency ultra reliability low complexity energy efficiency massive connectivity high data rate and then higher capacity different type of applications tend towards different type of requirements for example immersive experience like augmented reality and online gaming video uh, streaming requires higher capacity high data rate so we speak about almost this region now if you think about uh, by the way the the block inside is you can think of that as 4G or previous generations of uh, solar systems. And then we have instant uh, reaction applications like public safety, autonomous cars, and tactile internet requires low latency and uh, ultra reliability and extreme mobility. And then the third type is what we call uh, uh, if, if you want everything to get connected, you need Internet of Things, smart uh, cities, and then we have, uh, uh, as example, you have industrial automation. So then you think about massive connection, energy efficiency, and low uh, complexity. In addition to the solar systems, we can see also at the Wi-Fi. We can look at the Wi-Fi. For the Wi-Fi networks, um, basically it's usually used to avoid wires with high data rate, like we have inside the homes. You connect to your internet, browser, and so on, or, or router using Wi-Fi technology. As we mentioned before, there are different types of standards 802.11 AC, X, or uh, NG. So they're usually used for streaming video, GP, uh, gigabit per second data rates, and then we have high reliability and coverage inside and uh, outside. One application for that is also is the wireless uh, high definition TV and, and gaming. Satellite systems are, um, or can be used as wireless communication systems. The coverage area is huge. So the main characteristic is that if you are communicating through satellite, the coverage area is huge. And basically with three satellites, you can cover the entire Earth. Um, depending on the orbit, we have low orbit, medium orbit, and then we have geostationary satellites. We need to trade off coverage and latency. If you are close, you have low latency, but then smaller coverage. Uh, geostationary orbits are about 39,000 kilometers away. Medium orbit satellite is 9,000 kilometers approximately, and then we have the low Earth orbit, which is just 2,000 kilometers. We have one um, course that's E418 um, uh, in our curriculum that covers satellite communication. So please watch for future course in satellite communication. Optimized for one-way transmission, usually, like radio and TV broadcasting, sat digital video broadcasting, and most uh, two-way uh, communication has to go through low Earth orbit satellite because of, of the latency. So the mobile system that works on the satellites got into bankruptcy, especially in the early 1990s and 2000s. And now they're, they're coming back. Uh, low Earth orbits have resurfaced with 4G to bridge the digital divide, the areas that are not the mid of oceans and so on, where you cannot have easily based stations. Uh, of course, satellite, when you mention satellite, you, we think about the global positioning system and um, other localization systems. So satellite signals used to pinpoint locations, and of course, um, they are now popular in, in cell phones and personal data assistant, assistant devices and navigation devices. Uh, down here, I'm just sharing some pictures for you to think about satellites, because many people, they don't know the order of satellites we have. If this is a kind of visualizing if you think of satellite as dots then you think about 20,000 dots there uh, after satellites does its function for about 15 years or so it has to be uh, to go to the junkyard which is a space uh, place where we have to uh, leave the satellite and uh, the amount of satellites and so on created a problem called junk space junk which is really a big problem and we need to trace all these small things and so there we have uh, the national Satellite Technology Center, which is located in Riyadh. If you want to know more about the efforts, the national efforts on satellite and uh, the details, then you please visit their website, National Satellite Technology Center. So I'll leave you with this regarding satellites and we'll move to the next technology. Bluetooth, um, Bluetooth maybe is very familiar to you, but now I just want you to know that there are different versions. Even if you know it very well, there is a Bluetooth version 5.2 as of 2020, and now we're at 2022. So um, the versions keep uh, improving. 
it basically was for cable replacement uh, radio frequency technology it's a low cost it is meant to be for short range because you need to trade cost with the coverage so it, the new versions are extendable to about 100 meters and then of course we use the ISM band which is 2.4 gigahertz which is very crowded and of course um, we can have data channels which is on the range of 700 kilobits per second and three voice channels up to 3 megabits per second again this this could change with the version so if you if you are watching this in a future date you might uh, you might uh, be in need to update these numbers um, the technology is widely supported by telecommunications PCs and consumer electronic companies and now almost everything uh, all devices have built in Bluetooth it's very low cost few applications go beyond uh, cable replacement all right now Zigbee you can think of Zigbee as a, an industri industrial version of of, um, of Bluetooth and it is I8 uh, the standard is IEEE 802.15.4 so whether you read this or that it has the same uh, reference to Zigbee it's used for low rate low power low cost secure radio uh, it's complementary to Wi-Fi and Bluetooth the frequency band uses as you can see here we have uh, some of the low frequencies in megahertz and also 2.4 gigahertz is there data rates is we mentioned it's low 20 kilobits per second 40 kilobits per second and 250 kilobits per second but remember there are lots of applications that does not require high data rate including sensor sharing its uh, pressure or temperature with the with the center uh, range with we speak about uh, 10 to 100 meters it can be more of course support for large mesh networks this is not there in bluetooth now we have lots of sensors connected in industry so Zig zigbee would be an option support for low latency devices and the technology use will is carrier sense multiple ac uh, access collision avoidance um, we'll touch on this later on so just don't worry about it and applications like uh, light switches electric electricity meters traffic management and other low power sensors uh, the next technology that's coming on the horizon is the internet of things and and basically uh, the terminology is used now widely you have internet of trees internet of things internet of you just name it so basically the idea is it's it's not just connection between uh, human it's we will have connection between machines so we have m to m which is machine to machine and if once these devices start talking to each other then we'll have uh, uh, lots of devices to be connected machine to machine and to quantify the increase of data rate and we use the the CAGR the compound annual growth rate to show how uh, uh, in different feeds, different uh, sites, different locations, conditions, uh, the resources required are increasing, and then we have billions of machine to machine being connected by 22. Uh, uh, by 2022, 20, uh, we have about almost 15, above 14 billion devices. So, what's the Internet of Things? Is it enables every electronic device to be connected to each other, and the Internet. It includes smartphones, consumer electronics, cars, light, clothes, sensors, media, medical devices. Value uh, in IoT is data processing in the cloud. So uh, everything would be processed in the cloud. We have sensors everywhere. And this just this picture shows you that we'll have different requirements. Usually for these sensors, we are not after very high data rate, low data rate, and we need to save energy. We need to have green communication. We need to reduce the energy, the energy uh, consumption. So this is a nutshell, some of the technologies that are existing, you might already heard about them. And these are their applications uh, for, for uh, Internet of Things. I'm sure by now you, have, you are very familiar with, uh, with the terminology, healthcare, uh, industrial and others. Uh, in the coming video, please be with us. We'll be speaking about more emerging uh, systems, including massive MIMO software defined radio, wireless, uh, sensor networks and the likes so keep tuned and we'll see you then thank you for for being a good listener